Hi, we're undergrad aerospace engineering students from Cal Poly Pomona. Today we'll be introducing our inverted pendulum for our single projects in class. I'm Kareem Stevens. This is Andrew Cartman. I'm Colin Sakard. I'm Garun Arustamov. I'm Samad Arustia. I'm Ryan Matthew Salton. And that's our wrap. Yeah. So I'm going to go over the requirements and objectives of this inverted pendulum project. First of all, main objective is to stabilize the inverted pendulum. We're going to have it on a moving cart and it's going to be a pinned, uh, pinned support. So it will be able to move freely in both directions. And only the gyro is allowed for sensing and only the servo is allowed to control the cart. The USA Duino chip is going to be used as the microcontroller and we also want to minimize the cost as much as possible. Okay, so here we have our system block diagram for our inverted pendulum. Uh, this consists of the Arduino, the servo, uh, the mass, the wheel, the cart, the gyro, the software which will control the Arduino, the pendulum, and the computer. It is also worth noting that the computer will supply the power to the rest of the system. So here is our architect block diagram of our inverted pendulum. Power is supplied through the computer, which is then sent to the USA Duino, and then to the gyro and the servo. Software is also delivered from the computer to the USA Duino, which gets feedback from the unbalanced mass to the gyro and back to the USA Duino, and then sent back out to the servo, which will then control the servo linkage. From here, the cart will move back and forth about its axle and wheels, and it will transfer the momentum to the pendulum to the pin joint and control the unbalanced mass. Okay, so here we have the wiring diagram for our system. As you can see, it's the US Arduino, which is being powered by the CPU. This allows us to use the 3V3 and the 5 volt line. The 3V3 goes to the gyro itself, but which is powered through the VCC on there. Um, note that there's a regulator on there so you can send 5 volts. The 5 volt pin on the US Arduino is going to the servo. Um, we are sending a signal through the servo using the, any of the dashed lines on the digital line on the US Arduino. We are using pin 9, for example. Um, and the power is respectively grounded to the same ground on the board. And the SDA and SCL, which stands for signal digital line or signal clock line, respectively, um, since we're using the ITC interface, we're going to use the two pins right above the AREF to uh, send those signals. Hello, I'm Andrew Carpman, and I will go over the theory of how we derived a dynamic equation to describe our inverted pendulum motion. So we will start with the free body diagram of our system. As you can see here, here is our cart that will hold our pendulum uh, at the top of the pendulum, we have a concentrated mass that we will hang. Uh, it has a mass M. Also, there is a mass of the gyro that will be positioned somewhere here. And this is the mass of the rod itself here. This is our actuator. It's the servo. It will be used to balance our pendulum. And, and as you can see here, the servo uh, will produce a torque T. And and because of that, it will uh, react in a force here, which will move our cart back and forth. Now, I will use the uh, conservation of energy method to describe uh, this phenomenon here. This is the approach that we took. So as we all know, cons conservation of energy consists of these terms. Potential energy, kinetic energy, and work at point one. and the same at point two. And for the sake of simplicity, we will assume a small angle theta. And because we're assuming a small angle theta, you can see here that the potential energy will be small because this displacement here in the vertical directions is a small value, which is given by L times one minus cosine of theta. And if our theta is close to zero degrees or even anywhere less than 10 degrees, we can make that approximation that cosine of theta is approximately 1. And therefore, we will neglect the potential energy terms altogether. 
In addition, we're assuming that our pendulum here is released from, from rest at this position. And because of that, our initial kinetic, kinetic energy is zero. So now, here's what's left over after we eliminated these, these terms. So here we have the work, which is force times the displacement of the car, it's, which is equal to uh, translational kinetic energy of our cart system, rotational kinetic energy, and the work that's done afterwards to put the pendulum in a stable position. So now, what is F1? So F1, coming back to this picture here, you can see here that this force is equal to the torque that's provided by the servo divided by this length here, which is rep represented here. So T divided by L sub S cosine beta. Also, we multiplying it by the displacement. And displacement is equal to L sub S times sine of beta, which is this here. Also note that the velocity of the car can be found by this displacement by simply taking the derivative of this distance here. And this is distance. So after, when you take the derivative of the distance, you get this term. So now we, we have all the terms necessary to make our substitutions. So here is this equation rewritten with all of the appropriate substitutions. And after simplifying many of the terms, uh, we come down with this equation here. So as you can see here, our unknown is the beta, beta 2, and it's a transcendental function which cannot be solved for analytically. And because of that, we uh, have to go to numerical methods here. So uh, you just bring everything to the one side of the equation and equate it to zero. And you take the derivative if you want to use a New Newton's method. And now you have these two functions. You simply plug it into this Newton's method formula. And you can iterate it until the desired beta 2 solution is obtained. This is our US Arduino card that we'll be using to control the servo and gyro components of our inverted pendulum card. This right here is a USB port. It will be used to transfer the software from the computer onto the card, and it will also be used to power the whole system. This chip right here is the microcontrol unit. It will be the main processing unit on the Arduino. These 13 pins right here are digital output pins. They'll be used to um, We'll be only using one to control the servo output, and then the two pins on the end here will be used to communicate from the gyro. These pins over here will be used to power the components. We'll be using the five pin rail to power the servo, the 3v3 rail to power the gyro. So here we have all the components connected to our Arduino board. The orange line coming in here into pin 9 is the servo control wire. The blue wire coming here is the SDA communication wire from the gyro, and the white line is another communication from the gyro, the SCL line. These two lines together comprise of the I2C communication protocol that we'll be using for the gyro to communicate to the Arduino board. This red line right here at the very end into the 3V3 port is the power line for the gyro, and this black wire is its ground. The red wire right here for, that goes into the 5 volt rail is for the servo's power, and the green wire that comes out is its ground. Here's our servo we'll be using to um, control the cart's movement in our inverted pendulum. It's a high-tech HS300. It's a somewhat high torque, but it has plenty of power for us to control the cart's movement. It uses this three-pin output, which is the standard setup for a servo. Yellow wire going into the orange is the control wire. Red to red is the power pin, and then black to green is the ground. And as shown from before, we'll be powering it from the Arduino. We extended the moment arm on the servo horn to give us better uh, 
response of the cart. Here's the cart we'll be using. We adapted it from a, a project that was uh, completed last year, but for their inverter pendulum, they had to have it fixed. So in order to change it to our model, which is pinned, we had to dig out this little crevice here and insert a rod with the pendulum arm. These rubber band stoppers are here to stop it from sliding side to side. On the bottom of the cart, we have the axles epoxied in here with a pretty low friction wheel base here. And since they're foam, they also have good traction. Here is our gyro that we'll be using to sense the rotational inputs from the inverter pendulum cart. We'll be using the L3 GD20 3-axis gyro from Adafruit. We have it mounted here with these wires, this uh, green and orange wire, and then we soldered the pins here on the side. Onto these wires, these leads are soldered directly onto the pins to ensure we have a good connection. These two pins at the end we'll be using for the I2C communication to the Arduino, and then we'll be using VCC to power the board and then ground to ground it. Hi, so I'm going to be going over the software for our inverter pendulum cart. So we wrote three different codes just to try different solutions out. The first one implemented Andrew's theory that he went over. And so to start out, we start with these, um, including the header files at the top. The servo and then the two underneath it have to do with the gyro. Then we have to name our servo and then we name all these constants that are used in Andrew's formula. After declaring these other variables, we go down further. We say we're going to use I2C communication like we showed you in the hardware side of things. We initialize the servo position at 90 degrees and then we start this void setup loop. This is the loop that runs once in the program. So what we're doing here is initializing the serial port so we can view what the gyro and the position rates are on the computer. We attach a servo to pin 9 and then write its initial position of 90 degrees. So this section right here is the void loop section of the code. This is the part of the code that will repeat continuously throughout the code's progress. So first we start off by reading the gyro and calling theta dot, the gyro data that comes out of the z-axis. And this comes from the way that we have mounted the gyro to the pendulum. Then we get the force and force prime um, factors from Andrew's theory that he went over earlier. And we put it through this while loop, iterating over and over again until we get a beta value that's within a tolerance of uh, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. Then we take this tolerance and convert it to degrees and write it to the servo position. And after we write this, we print out the gyro rates and the positions of the servo just so we can keep track of where the card is doing. And it keeps repeating over and over again, updating the servo position with the new data dots. So this is our second attempt at uh, writing a code to balance the inverter pendulum card. Once again, we start by including the header files for the servo and gyros. And then we go down, it's the same sort of uh, top level stuff. We declare that we're using I2C communication for the gyro and initialize the position for the servo at 90 degrees. In the void setup section, we start the serial at the 9600 valve rate and then attach the servo and write it to its initial position. And then down here in the void loop, we read the gyro and we determine um, if the gyro rates between certain parameters that we set. So here we have um, like less than negative 40 is when we'll have an aggressive writing position. And between 25 and 40 degrees per second, we'll have a more conservative. And then between uh, negative 5 and negative 25, we'll have a very, very conservative writing position. Just so we could kind of have different response rates at different um, gyro rates that we're getting out here. So this is our final attempt here at writing the code to stabilize the uh, inverted pendulum. And here we incorporated a PID controller into the code. So we included the PID header file from the Arduino library, and then the servo and gyro ones as from before. Come down here, this is all the same, but over here we had to initialize the position, and we had to come up with another uh, 
gyro variable and doubles instead of uh, the position used to be ends and then before these also inputs into ends too. So we had to make doubles so we could input it into the PID function. Here we want to have a set point of zero, so this means we want to drive the uh, gyro rate to zero degrees per second. And then we input the, this is the what the PID is uh, reading as an input and what it's outputting. And this is a set point like I said before, and then this is a KI, K, or sorry, this is KP, KI, and KD. And when we iterated, uh, tried a bunch of different values, and this is giving us the best response that we found so far. The void setup is the same as before. We attach a server with the same pin and write it to the initial position. And then the void loop here, we just, it's a lot simpler than it was before. We just read the gyro, um, take the gyro rate and cast it into that uh, double variable that we created before, compute the new um, response from the PID function, and then write the position. Here we have the theoretical Newton's approach to solve our inverted pendulum problem. As you can see, the response is not significant and there's usually no response at all. That's why we've, uh, we're using different approaches to solve our problem. Okay, so here we use the experimental method to solve our inverted pendulum problem. The, the response of the cart is a little better than the first approach, but it does not respond adequately enough to stabilize the pendulum. As you can see, the rate of the servo does depend on the rate of the gyro. Here we use the PID control method to stabilize our inverted pendulum. As you can see, we do obtain a better response from the servo arm but it's still not adequate enough to completely stabilize our inverted pendulum. We use these railings here to make sure that the cart only moves in one direction. And the PID control method was optimized by playing around with the uh, different gain values until we were able to obtain this. And the servo does respond a little more aggressively now that we have the PID in, uh, implemented into our code. You notice there is a small lag between the servo response and the gyro, and this is the reason why our inverted pendulum is not working perfectly, or is not able to stabilize the pendulum.